Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and it is finally the day to put all the tutorials together to make this skirt. So I've got previous tutorials linked below that show you how to make covered buttons, how to make thread chain button loops, and how to make side seam pockets. Those are all skills we're going to be combining in this video to make this skirt. To start to make the pattern for this skirt, I started with a skirt sloper. And if you don't have one of those, I have another video linked below about how to draft a skirt sloper for your own unique measurements. So I'm going to start with how I did the front here. Went ahead and did a center front line and then I traced just over to the first dart leg. I had the dart cut out. And then you want to rotate the skirt so that you close that dart. And it's going to curve the waist a little bit and also kick out that side seam. And then this line curves a little bit so it's the same length on that side seam as the center front seam. Next, I had to figure out on here where did I want it to end because this goes to knee length and I wanted the skirt to be a little above knee length. So I'm going to take some length off of it here. And then I had to also create that front curve. So I used a French curve to do this, but since this is a scale model, that's not going to work as well. I'm actually going to use my pin tin. So pretty much anything that you can use to make that front curve, um, you can use a French curve, you can use a bendy ruler, you can use a dinner plate, whatever has a pleasing curve to you and you'll curve that in. And then this is the front piece, but then I needed to add the button plackets and facings. So add the center front there. And then this is what my front piece of the pattern is going to look like. For the back, and this is just the upper part of the pattern, we'll talk about the ruffle in a minute. For the back, I started with the same thing. I'm going to trace that center back, trace the dart, and then rotate the pattern so that just the dart leg is lined up, and trace the side seam. Take the same length off so that it will match here and at the side seam in the back. And then there is my back pattern piece. Now, for the waistband, what I did on this was just go back to my pattern here and cut off the part that I wanted to be the waistband, like that. And then, when I cut these apart, I need to add seam allowances to this line and this line. So let's trace this, cut it all apart, trace it back out, and I'll show you what the actual pattern pieces look like. Okay, I'm adding a seam allowance to my side seam because there were no seam allowances on my sloper. For the center front facing piece, I need to determine how much I want to overlap and then that's how much I add. And then when I do this, the pattern piece, I need to double that amount so that I'll have enough to fold back. And then in addition, I need to add a little bit extra to be able to fold under the raw edge on the back of that facing. So we'll add this much. On the waistband pieces, I also need to add seam allowances. And I need to add the additional amount to the center front facing as well. Now the waistband facing doesn't have to do this double fold thing because I'm going to cut two of the waistband. So I can just add the seam allowance to the front of the overlap. Same thing for the back here that I need to add seam allowances anywhere I'm going to sew this together. I'm going to cut the back on the fold so I don't need a seam allowance there. I'm also going to cut the back facing on the fold so no seam allowance needed there. All right. Here are my pattern pieces with seam allowances added. 
here is what they look like without the seam allowances showing. And let me pull out the actual fabric pieces and then I'll show you what those look like as well. Here is my cut fabric all laid out so you can see what the pattern pieces look like. As you can see, I'm gonna be adding pockets. Here are my two back facings, those are cut on the fold. Here are my four front facings, need two for each side. Um, here's my skirt back, here is my skirt front, and you can see that curved lower edge down here. And then to talk about the ruffle that we're gonna be adding. I simply measured on my body how long I wanted the ruffle to extend past where the seam line was going to land from the skirt back. And for the, that part, I just cut a rectangular piece of fabric here that I am going to be gathering and attaching on the back. For the front though, we have this curve to deal with. So instead of drafting a whole other pattern piece, what I did was I knew the length that I needed to add from the bottom here because it's the same length that I was adding to the back. And then I literally laid out my pattern when I was cutting it so that, let me move these pieces so you can see this better so that when I cut out the skirt front that I could then use the piece right below the skirt front, same cut line, to make my ruffles that are going to go on the skirt front. So that way I didn't have to draft an entire other pattern piece, I already have that exact same curve that's on the front on the lower ruffle. Let's talk about how to put this together. I'm going to work on the skirt front first. But before I even do that, what I'm gonna do is take all of the facings, which is this button facing that I added, and the back facing and the front facings, and I'm gonna interface um, all of those. So this is a Simflex gauge, and I'll have a link to this below, and I like to use it to space buttons because then you don't have to do the math, you just space out however many buttons you want. So this has eight, on, um, points on it to space buttons. I'm only going to I'm going to be using 14 buttons on this skirt. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to fold the skirt front facing there in half, and then I'm going to use seven points on each half. So So here is the right side of my skirt and I've sewn thread chains instead of button loops on this facing. And I show you how to do that in another video which I've got linked below. So go ahead and check that out if you need to. And then let's take a look at the left side of the skirt. So what I did here is pressed it down um, the amount that I added, which was a quarter inch, and then folded it in half and pressed it again. I will top stitch both of these later to make sure that that facing doesn't flip back out, but I want to set this aside for right now. We're not gonna do that step until after I've attached the ruffle to the bottom. So the next step then is actually to sew on the pockets that I'm adding. I've gone ahead and stitched on the pockets as you can see. The instructions to do this are in another video and that one is also linked below. And then let's move on to the waistband of this skirt. So I've interfaced all of my waistband pieces for this and for the waistband lining. I did that because I'm working with rayon crepe for this fabric. If I was using a fabric with more body, I would only interface the outer waistband of this. So you need to put the two front waistband pieces against the back waistband piece and stitch together at the side seams. And then I like to press those seams open and you're gonna place that right sides together with the waistband lining. And I am matching up the seam, um, seams here, and then you're going to stitch all around that upper seam and down the two front edges. Okay, once you have sewn the two waistband pieces together, go ahead and trim down that seam allowance and clip the corners. 
So you just want to cut the corners diagonally close to the stitching and then turn the waistband right side out and press. And then we're going to attach this to the skirt. So here is my skirt and I'm going to place the waistband right sides together with it and I'm only going to pin one layer. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch this waistband seam all along that edge. Okay, y'all. Once you've gone ahead and you've sewn that seam, go ahead and press it up towards the waistband. And then as you can see on the other side of the waistband, I've pressed the raw edge under. And I am now going to fold it so that you want it um, so that it just barely covers your stitching line. And then you're going to pin. And then you want to stitch from the right side. So you want to stitch in the ditch right in between in that hole of the seam there and what that'll do is that'll catch this on the back side and it'll be invisible on the front side of the skirt. Okay y'all, once you have stitched in the ditch on the waistband then here's what it is going to look like and then we are finally ready to deal with the ruffle at the bottom of the skirt. So let me set this aside and let's take a look at the ruffle. I did a few things already off camera to prepare this to attach to the skirt. First, on the front edge, I went ahead and pressed under once and then pressed that fold so now the front edge is going to match the face edge of the skirt. Then, I went ahead and placed the front pieces right sides together on either end of the back piece and stitched and finished that seam. And then finally, I went and um, unfolded and did two basting stitches along the top edge that I'm going to now use to gather this to match the actual skirt piece. So here is my skirt. And I'm going to want this front piece here to match in with this piece here. So I need to gather. And I'm just going to pull on my basting stitches to do that. Okay, and remember that I want this to match once the facing is folded up. That's why I went ahead and pressed that. And then I want to make sure that the ruffles are evenly spaced. The gathers, that is. Okay, once I have a pretty good approximation there, I'm going to move to the next section, which is gathering up the skirt back. And then finally, I'm going to move on to that last section and gather it. Okay, then what I'm going to want to do is place the skirt pieces right sides together. I want to unfold the facing and match that up to the unfolded edge of the skirt ruffle. And then I will go ahead and match my seams, pull those gathers, and I'm going to stitch all the way across this seam to attach the ruffled portion to the lower portion of my skirt. Okay y'all, after you have sewn the ruffle to the bottom of the skirt, then we just have a few things left to do to finish. First of all, you're going to want to go ahead and close up this facing. So go ahead and fold the facing in along all those lines that you already pressed. And then, let's turn it this way so it's easier to see. And then you're going to want to top stitch all the way down that facing. 
Then you're going to need to mark and sew the buttons onto this side of the skirt. On the other side of the skirt, I've added a buttonhole here on the waistband for the waist button. And then all I have to do after that is sew on the actual buttons, which I'm going to be doing by hand. And that's it, you're done.